How much did you serve the Lord? There are some of you here who were determined to serve the Lord in whatever capacity that the Holy Spirit has gifted you. Pero may nangyari ba? Nakapag-serve ba naman nung nakaraang taon? At kung nakapag-serve, yes, how much? The way to be blessed is to love the Lord and to serve the Lord. The Lord does not need our services. The Lord likes us to serve Him so He can bless us and reward us. The more we serve, the more we get blessed here and in the next life. Akala naman ng iba sa next lang, puro lang treasures in heaven. There is joy in service. Kung sino man ang taong lumayo sa Panginoon for a while at nagkatuyo-tuyo ang kanyang buhay at nawalan ng siglang kanyang espiritu, yun ang makakapagpatotoo sa atin that there is joy in service. That that alone is a reward. But God is so good that that alone is not the reward. There's a lot more. If you have served the Lord this past year, kahit hindi kayo nagkapera, hindi tayo nagkaroon ng bahay lupa, hindi tayo nagkaroon ng bagong gamit, you were already blessed. Because while you were serving the Lord, you were busy that you were not able to serve Satan. That already is a blessing. Yun lang naging busy tayo, hindi tayo nagkaroon ng panahon na gumawa ng mali dahil may taro tayong ginagawang tama, blessing na yun. Dahil yung walang ginagawang tama, nagkakaroon ng panahon yan para gumawa ng mali. Wala namang taong talagang walang ginagawa. You know, Satan does not allow us to rest. If you're not busy with the Lord, He will keep you busy with Him. And so those who serve the Lord were blessed. How much did you serve the Lord the past year? And there's another way to be blessed, according to verse 16. Refuse to bow down to other gods. Who could have been your God aside from the true one the past year? There are many idols. What could have been yours this past year? It could have been money. It could have been another person. It could have been an emotion. Maraming mga tao, mga young people especially, pag na-involve sa non-Christian, nawawala na ang apoy nila sa pagmamahal sa Panginoon at sa kanilang service. Nagiging idol, mga tao. Nagiging idol yung career. Nagiging idol kung minsan, mga bisyo, kung ano-ano. And so all of this, I like to ask you, this past year, how was your idolatry? Sino naman at ano-ano ang naging mga idols? Because we are to refuse to bow down to other gods. In verse 18, sabi ni Lord, Fix these words in your hearts and minds. The words of the Lord, fix them in your heart and mind. How many verses? Were you able to memorize and understand the past year? Baka naman isang taon ang lumipas, wala man lang tayong isang verse na natandaan, na memorize, ay mahiyahiya naman kayo. Sobrang nakakahiya yan, nasasayang yung ating utak na ibinigay ng Diyos. Kung ano-anong na memoria, pero yung mga salita ng Diyos, hindi. Sabi, fix these words in your heart and in your minds. Because the word of the Lord is our potent weapon against the deceit of the evil one. How many verses have you memorized? Yung mga iba kung hindi mo pa puwersahin, kung hindi mo pa bigyan ng quiz, walang mememorizing. Hanggang ngayon, hindi mo lang sa ulo yung order of the 27 books of the New Testament. Yung pa kayang Old Testament. Year comes, year goes, year comes, year goes. Ganun pa rin, kinakalawang ang mga utak. Walang nadadagdag. It is our sublime duty and privilege to keep in our hearts the word of the Lord. Fix these words in your hearts and minds and teach them to your children. Teach them when you walk. Teach them when you sit down. When you lie down. Whatever you do, teach them to your children. Did you? Yung mga may anak na. Yung mga may mga pamangkin. Yung mga may mga pwedeng turuan. Did we teach? Mga kapatid, kung wala kayong naturuan tungkol sa Panginoon, this past year, sayang ang taon ninyo. Sayang lang ang mga tubig na ininom at mga gulay na kinain at mga manok na nilunok. Sayang lang ang mga hangin na ibinibigay sa atin ng Diyos dahil inutil kayo. Kung nakaraan ang isang taon, wala kayong naturuan tungkol sa Diyos. Inutil talaga kayo. Sayang, nakakahiya lang sa Diyos that you are being kept alive on this planet. Pabigat lang kayo sa planetang ito kung wala kayong saysay at wala kayong silbi. How many of you can face God at the end of the year and say, Lord, may naturuan po ako? Baka nga yung iba ang naituro nyo pa sa iba, eh, kasalanan pa. Nakijoin pa tayo sa kanilang kasalanan, naturuan pa natin ng mali. O kaya, tinolerate natin yung kanilang kamalian. Yun pa, 
ang naituro natin. Shame on you. If you're going to face the end of the year with nothing in your hands to bring to the Lord na naturuan, the most precious gift that we can give to the Lord is a soul that we snatch from hell and bring them to paradise. This is the only thing that God likes us to do. That He has not empowered even the angels to do. To bring souls to Him. And if you haven't brought a single soul to the Lord and you have been a Christian, nakakahiya. Talaga, kung pwede ka lang sanang matunaw, matunaw ka na ngayon dyan. Dahil nakakahiya yun. Next year, meron na namang darating na taon. Isang taon na naman nawawaldasin. Sasayangin if you are not going to learn from this error. Okay, may nadala tayo. Isa, dalawa. Sana man lang, isa man lang sa bawat isang buwan. Labing dalawa naman ng buwan. Tatlong araw ang isang buwan, more or less. Siguro naman, hindi naman mahirap magdala ng isang kaluluwa sa Panginoon sa loob ng isang buwan. You must be able to at least count 12 souls that you have brought to the Lord at the end of the year to be able to respect yourself. How can you respect yourself if you do not even bring any soul to the Lord? Yun lang naman ang wala sa Kanya eh. At yun lang ang tayo lamang ang binigyan niya ng ganong klase kapangyarihan na dalhin ang mga tao sa kanya. Not even the angels could do it. And not even the demons can take it away pag dinala natin sa Lord. So, teach them. Did you teach? What are the results of a blessed life? Yung mga pangangailangan natin, spiritual, emotional, material, dumating ba lahat ng oras ng pangangailangan natin? Kasi ipinangako, if we live in the promised land, if we love the Lord with our heart and soul and serve Him, rain will be sent in its season. Sa mga sobrang nagipit sa inyo nung nakaraang taon, gusto kong talungin, baka naman, wala tayo sa promised land. Hindi ko man nasa church kayo, nasa promised land na. Being in the promised land is a state of the heart. It's not where you are. It's not even what you do or serve. Kasi marami nagsaserve, pero para ng professional. Para nalang trabaho. Pero gano tayo kalapit sa Panginoon sa ating personal life? If rain was not enough the past year, isa lang ang ibig sabihin. We were not in the promised land all along. Kasi ipinangako, if you are there, there will be rain. I-reverse mo, if there was no rain, you were not there. So sino ngayon ang dapat sisihin? If we have experienced poverty the past year, material, emotional, spiritual poverty, tayo. The Lord has already set the system in motion. Be in the promised land, and it will always rain. In its season, whenever we need it. So, hindi siya ang nagkukulang. Tayo. Ano pa ang nangyayari sa blessed life? Grain and wine and oil will be gathered. Akala nung iba, ang blessing ni Lord, puro spiritual. Kasama ang material dyan. Ano pang ibig sabihin ng grain and wine and oil? Don't over-spiritualize. Yan ay mga lamang dyan. Yan ay mga pagkain, mga kailangan ng tao. Maging ang pangangailangan ng isang tao na sa Panginoon, ibinibigay niyang lahat. It's part of the promise. Kung iniisip natin that we are not supposed to enjoy life in this world, at puro iniisip natin yung sa, sa kabila lang na buhay, hindi yata yun correct. Because the Lord has also promised material supplies to His people. Probably not in luxurious abundance, but some are even gifted with that. And thank the Lord, especially if they are charitable to share. But the point here is, huwag niyong isipin ang pagiging banal ay pagiging dukha. At pagiging mahirap. Because our Lord is not a saddest God. Nung kinreate niya nga ang paradise, all the fruit trees were there and all the beautiful things for Adam and Eve to enjoy. At sabi niya, eat everything except this one. Hindi niya may sinabing, don't eat anything except this one. Baligtad, eat anything you like. A life of liberty. A life of enjoyment with the Lord. And there's nothing that we should be guilty about if we enjoyed life. So long as we don't break the commands and we don't go back to Egypt. Because there's a lot of enjoyment in the Lord. And this is what many Christians have to mature to be able to learn. Na ang Christian life ay hindi isang napakahabang penitensya. Hindi pagpapakasakit at pagdurusa lamang. Although there are certain areas. San tayo nagdurusa? Sa pagtalikod sa kasalanan and the pleasures of it. Saan tayo nahihirapan? Sa paggawa ng kabutihan. But everything else is freely enjoyed by the believer. Sabi ni Lord, grain 
for your cattle will be provided. Pati yung mga pagkain ng mga baka, pati yung mga damo, yung mga sakate, ay eh, available para yung mga ahayop well-fed so that the people can either let the animals serve them or they can eat the animals or whatever. But the point was, the Lord was supplying the food chain so that the number one beneficiary, who is man, will be well provided for. There is no wisdom and there is no virtue in poverty. The Lord does not want us to be poor. But if we have to be poor because of our convictions, then let it be. But we don't have to be unnecessarily poor para lang matawag na godly. Did you have enough blessings the past year? Spiritual, social, emotional, were you blessed? Were you blessed enough? Sa lahat ng may reklamo dyan at kulang, ang dapat reviewin, how consistently did you live in the promised land? At kung hindi, eh, huwag na kayo magtanong. Obvious na yung sagot. Nandun na yon. We are the author of our own sorrows. Kumisan, hindi ikaw ang direct author noon, pero in somebody very close to you, syempre, nadadamay ka. As the Lord says, He sends the rain both on the just and the unjust. Kaya sa mga pagkakamali kumisan ng mga taong malapit sa atin, kahit tayo living and trying hard to live a godly life, ay tayo rin ay naambo na ng mga kahirapan nila. Because we are here, trapped in a very cruel world system where Satan has become the prince in the hearts of a majority of people. Ang sabi, you will eat and be satisfied. Were you satisfied? Kung hindi, baka naman sobrang mataas ang ating expectation. Or, kung reasonable naman at hindi pa na-satisfy, you probably did not live long enough in the promised land. And you did not love God enough. And you did not serve Him enough. Because the promise is sure. Love the Lord and serve the Lord and rain will be sent in its season. Grain and wine and oil will be gathered. And even grain for your cattle will be provided. You will eat and be satisfied. The Lord promised to bless His people if they stayed in the promised land and loved and served the Lord. Once more, I like to challenge you. Was your past year blessed? Balance. Spiritually, physically, materially, socially, emotionally. Balance. Remember verses 16 and 17, If you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow before them, the Lord's anger will burn against you. And what happens to a person against whom God's anger burns? Sabi, the Lord will shut the heavens so that it will not rain. Kaya yung mga ibang buhay, nagkakaroon ng tagtuyot, nagkakaroon ng mga drought, at kumisa naman may bagyo at baha, walang balance. This is what happens when the Lord's anger burns against us. Sabi ng iba, ay mabait ang Diyos, hindi niya gagawin yan. Sa kabaitan niya, gagawin niya yan, so as not to tolerate us to continue to do what's wrong. When the Lord punishes us because of our wrongdoings, that's an act of kindness. So that we will not stay long in that difficult and sinful state. What else happens? The ground will yield no produce. Nangyayari yan kahit sa mga Christian workers. Namalat na ng kakakanta, wala pang na-bless ni isang tao. Hindi ko man nagsaserve sa Lord, yung puso nandun na. Lalo naman pag hindi nagsaserve, definitely wala na dun yung puso. Kaya ang dami-dami na ngang hindi nagsaserve, wala yung heart. Among the nagsaserve, meron pa din na wala dun. Dahil pakitang tao. He will shut the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce. Mga ginagawa natin, walang blessing, walang anointing. Nagpapagod, nagpupunyagi, walang nangyayari. Hindi naman tumitigil ang kahahanap buhay, wala pa rin mangyari. Kumikita ng marami, pero sobra rin ang gastos. Wal- Akala nung iba, pang naman sabing na-bless ako materially, eh umula ng pera at madaganan ako ng tatlong libong piso o limang milyon dito. The mere fact that you are spared from a major expense is already a blessing. Yung kapitbahay mo, kumita ng 50 mil, nasa gasaan naman ng anak, bumasas ng 50 mil din. Ikaw, hindi ka nagka 50 mil, hindi naman nasa gasaan ng anak mo, dandai mo na rin na nagkaroon ng 50 mil. Hindi ka ilangan na dumating yung blessing para mamasabing mabless ka. Yun lamang, you were spared. Iniligtas tayo sa mga sakuna, sa mga gastusin. Blessing na yun. 